Good afternoon all, welcome, welcome. Brother Tabuda will be breaking bread with us today. Um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear kind and loving God, thank you for all that you do. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us another day and for bringing us past midday. We thank you for this prayer retreat platform where iron can sharpen iron. Dear Lord, we pray um, uh, that you can allow everything to be Holy Spirit-led. Before I continue, I pray that you forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness, and that you do the same for everybody under the sound of my voice. Please clothe us in Jesus' righteousness. Um, we pray, dear Lord, that um, you can uh, fill Brother Tabuda with the Holy Spirit and put your words in his mouth, um, and that you can fill all of us with the Holy Spirit, help us to have listening ears, to be able to digest the information and to share it with others. Dear Lord, we pray that you bless this meeting from start to finish. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're doing and all that you're about to do. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, before the talk, then we're, we'll be sharing this the, the hymn 474. Take the name of Jesus. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of war. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then and where you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Take the name of Jesus, river, as a shield from every snake. If temptations round you gather, breathe the holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh, I'm sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, I'm sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his, sorry, I just lost it. Uh, what was it? What number was it? When his loving arms receive us. 474. And his songs are tongues employ. Why don't you do the verse chorus? Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Fourth verse. In the name of Jesus, bowing, falling, prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven, crown him when our journey is complete. Oh, precious name, oh, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, our sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Amen, amen. Amen and amen. The precious name of Jesus, we need to take it with us everywhere. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Again, thank you so much for the beautiful singing, um, Brother Tabuda, Brother Stephen and Sister Margaret. Amen and amen.
Um, well, welcome, welcome all. Brother Tabuda will be breaking bread with us today. Um, uh, we know that um, he is a strong man of the Bible um, who likes to read the verses and um, look at it from different angles and come to us with something fresh. Um, so I know we will be blessed. Um, so without further ado, over to you, Brother Tabuda. Welcome. Thank you, Sister Z. Once again, it's a pleasure to be on this platform. Um, it, it's, it's a pleasure to um, for the Lord to use me in this way, and that in the midst of our fellow uh, brethren, that as the Holy Spirit inspires us, as the Holy Spirit reveals, that we share the blessings together, and that uh, His uh, the His presence be seen, be heard, and be felt in a big, a mighty way. That may this be an enjoyable experience, and that the word will come from him, and that he will be truly blessed. Um, without further ado, as uh, it has been mentioned before, the script, uh, the topic of this uh, uh, presentation is for his name's sake. For his name's sake, and. Uh, uh, it's an interesting topic. It's uh, the Lord's name, Jesus' name. He, the, he had so many different names. But here we're looking at the for the sake of that name. For the sake of that name. You know, the, the scripture reading, I'm going to take it from Psalms 23, verse 3. Psalms 23, verse 3. You know about the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. But we're just focusing on verse 3, which reads, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that your thoughts towards us are those thoughts of good, good more than evil, to have an expected good end. It is your will that we we move away from sin and be repentant. It is your will that you always want us to connect with you in spirit and that ultimately sin will be eradicated. And it is through your name that we can connect with you. And that holy name, the names you've been given, the, word, the names that portray your character. But I pray as we listen to you, as you speak, dear Heavenly Father, May the revelations come in our way, in a big, a mighty way, so that as we finish this, may we this message impact on us positively, and that it will be inspired. We have this confidence in the spring that the Lord for sure will not forsake us, and that the Lord will be with us, even as we, for as long as we seek him, we'll find him. May this be our experience in a big, a mighty way. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, like I said to you, uh, for his name's sake. And uh, I, I happen to read from the book of um, Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 4. Revelation chapter 3, verse 4. It's talking about um, uh, the names, you know, uh, it's very interesting uh, what it means. And all these things, we need to relate to us what it means, all these things. Um, 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 brother, have you moved away from your mic? Because suddenly your voice has gone faint. Well, can you hear me now? It's a bit better, thanks. Yeah, I did, I did say, because today I'm doing the presentation not from home. I'm away from home. But uh, uh, hopefully... Um, it will be much better. Can you hear me much better now? Yeah. Are you, good, on thanks, bro. Are you on loudspeaker? Uh, no, I'm not on loudspeaker. Okay. Yeah. Sounds okay. Sounds... Yeah, I'm not on. But as I was saying that I'm reading from the book of Revelation chapter 12, it's, talk, it's talking about the Lord's name. Um, It reads... Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and shall go no more out, and will write upon him the name of my God, and name of the city of my God, 
which is a new Jerusalem, which cometh com uh, come down and out of heaven from my God, and I'll write upon him my new name. You write well, what, up. Sorry, you, brother, what, what, what verse, what chapter and what verse was that? Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. Okay, thank you. Yeah, are you there? I'll read it again. It reads, Him that overcometh will I make a, a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I'll write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is a new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name, his new name. And as Amen. we know, as we know that uh, uh, God's character is described in the Ten Commandments. And we know that he's loving the Lord and then loving your neighbor. And we know that his character is all about love. And we know that he, it is his desire not to, um, you know, force anybody. You know, that's why this uh, uh, gift of free will, you know, free will that you, you always have the, uh, the freedom to choose. And in this case, we can just narrow it down to the freedom of choosing which is right and uh, freedom of choosing which is wrong. And when you come to uh, uh, connect with God, it, 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 you have to connect with God because you choose to. And because, and hopefully it will be for the right reasons. Because uh, if you connect with God with the right reasons, then you build a relationship, especially with our Lord Jesus. And his name will be written on you. Because what, what it means, the name is his character. It is his character. You know, when we when Jesus comes, when you go to heaven, it is our character that will go to heaven. It is our God, character that God, goes to heaven. But then that character is the character which uh, reflects God's character. So in other words, this is the new name which uh, uh, will be written as, uh, it, as, he, as the Lord promises. It will be written in our, in our forehead. In our, in, the, in, our, in, the, in our forehead, that new name is God's character. So if we have God's character, then, then it will be easy for us to connect with him. If you don't have uh, God's character, one, there's no way you can go to heaven. Two, if by any chance, which is impossible, that you go to heaven, you feel out of place when you're there. Because you cannot really relate to what's, what's going on. So we read here, um, the, uh, God's man servant, uh, King David, he says, um, well, he restored my soul, yes? He, he, he heals, right? And then he says, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness. So the Lord consist, consistently leads us into the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. For his name's sake. Why, why for his name's sake? His name's sake is his character. The character which we should reflect. The character which Adam and Eve reflected before sin. So wherever we are, wherever we are, whatever situation we are, we are in, we need by all means to reflect God's character. Yeah. And that the names will be written on our forehead. And in this case, you know, the life of our King David, he was just an innocent shepherd boy. He had no idea that uh, you you go you, you'll be anointed as a king, and he wasn't even expecting it. But he is one person who, even in his young um, <clears throat> during his young days, he he loved the Lord. And when he was chosen, when he was chosen, uh, he did not become king straight away, because the the current king was still there. But the Lord was always blessing him. 
night he was able to kill a lion. He was able to uh, to kill um, uh, Goliath. And not only that, he spent the majority of his time on the run because the king wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him. The king was jealous that this little boy is become is the one who's taking my throne. He was consistently on the run. So, you see, you you meet something a bitter sweet whereby uh, a sweet bitter whereby you know you've been anointed with the king, but you can't be the king. When you think, okay, everything go well, uh, 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 then I'll become a king, then I rule, etc. It did not go that very well for King David. Because um, he had to wait until King Saul was killed. And you know that even when he was king, he went through all sorts of challenges, temptations, succumbed to temptations. He was an adulterer. He killed. And he, he did all these things before the Lord. But it was not smooth, smooth sailing. You know, when he had committed adultery, and the prophet Nathan came to him and pointed out that he is the one who was being referred to. Immediately, he just acknowledged and said, I have sinned. I have sinned. And against, I've, seen, I've sinned against my God. You know, because why? He understood God and he understood his character. He understood who he was. So perhaps it's not enough for one to just say, I've just sinned. No. If you go deeper and say, I've sinned against God, it really reflects a deeper uh, uh, sense of, you know, uh, of a relationship. Because if you understand who God is in his name, and if you understand that the same God, he leads us into path of righteousness. He wants us to be upright. And he, that's what he intends to do all the time. And it is us who we have the tendency to go and sin. And if you fully understand that, that this is the, 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 uh, the same Lord who points us to righteousness for his name's sake, for his character, then it will be, uh, you know, as you are tempted, as you are tempted, you become so remorseful, knowing very much the immense, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the the the, uh, the, 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 the big picture you've, uh, you've uh, uh, engaged yourself in, knowing very well that you've sinned against God. You know, he has sinned against God. It is that thought. You know, just to validate the point that uh, the Lord, um, which King David was saying that he, um, he leaded in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. If you go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 41, I think it's a, it's a well-known uh, script as well. This is uh, the Lord addressing Israel. See, Israel was a classic nation who was chosen. Israel was chosen to be an example to other nations, to carry God's character, so that when they carry God's character, those other people who do not know the Lord will come to know the Lord. And when they come to know the Lord, then they will worship the one and only true God. But as you know, the um, Israel's history, all this just fell apart. None of these things were followed. Israel was constantly, uh, you know, not following God's commandment. They were going, they were going to captivity. They are back. They're, this has been their life, you know, the life history of the, uh, the children of Israel without going into detail. I'm going to look at uh, uh, Isaiah 41. Perhaps if I look at Isaiah 41, verse 10 to maybe 13, uh, which reads, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. 
be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen ye, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand, uh, with the right hand of my righteousness. Now look at it. He say you uphold Israel with the right hand of righteousness, which means the while the Lord will be trying to teach the children of Israel all the right to be to to observe God's commandments to be to, to do that those things which are right so that they become righteous. This is why in, in Deuteronomy chapter six. Yeah, the Lord was also emphasizing that the, even the children should be taught of the Lord, to keep God's commandments, even to be taught in devotion at the doors, where the way, whereby every time consistently they'll be just be en engrossed in learning about God, so that the, the 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 uprightness of God will be living in them. So that they uphold God's principle, which is keeping God's commandments. This is what the Lord was uh, wanted the children of Israel to do. But as you know, they did not do that. In verse eleven, he said, "Behold, all, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they they that strive with thee." shall perish. So it means when the Lord intervened, then which means whatever challenges, whatever persecution, whatever it is, it will change. So the way it will change, it will change in such a way that those enemies will realize that there is some something which has happened, something which uh, which is not evil, something which is good, but it's making everything to change. And also, that's the reason why um, King David would say he leads in, uh, into paths of righteousness for his name's sake, because wherever they were, they were supposed to uphold God's principles so that the things of the world of that time do not encounter them so that they change. So if they maintain the same principles, then when the Lord intervenes, uh, when whatever hardship they're facing, then they will realize that the, the nation of Israel was consistent in doing the, the, uh, in, uh, the way they live. They consistent, consistently connected to their God. They totally surrendered their God. And that God, their God, did everything and has done everything for them. And it is that in that way that the children of Israel will then uh, educate those people who do not know God in such a manner that they will also now join and worship that God. So that's the reason why the Lord um, he will uphold uh, the, ch the children of Israel with his right hand of his righteousness. In verse 12, he says, Thou shalt seek them, and thou shalt not find them. Even them that contented with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a, a thing of naught. You know, certain majority of us here in, in the UK, we are immigrants. We've come to a respected beat in Africa, the Caribbean, or Asia, whatever it is, we come here. The way uh, our experiences in this country, at, at times, it means most people, it has never been smooth sailing. Uh, some, some of us have yet to lie in find, to find their way into the system. Some manage to uphold God's principles, whereby they, they will be prepared Whatever outcome comes, if it doesn't work out, it means the Lord um, has, sent, he, he, is, um, he, has designed it such a way that they're not meant to be in this country. And they do everything according, according to God's um, principles, according to the book. But you find that at times, um, in a situation whereby you've got a degree and uh, you uh, 
kind of expect to have a white collar job. But then you realize that no, they, there's no um, room for that for job for that kind of job for you. And perhaps ended up being a cleaner, sweeping around. Can you imagine some some of the supervisors coming to look at you, watching you sweep, and they're satisfied you're good at sweeping and that you are a graduate. And you know, at times you tend to think you are degrading yourself. But you find that after, if you are consistent in what you do in the fear of the Lord, one by one, as a, as lowly as a cleaner, they'll be coming to you to ask, why are you this way? Probably they might not even know that you are that educated. I'm talking about the worldly education here. And then obviously you will not even focus and pro, uh, you know, promoting or projecting your worldly education, but you just be promoting your fear of the Lord. And then people who start now coming to you, you find that uh, with, uh, it, it, people just come into you for you for advice. Oh, there's this, this and that, what should I do? Because they can sense, they can see that there's something in you which is good. And uh, if, if there's something which is good in you, you'll be able now to proclaim God's character. They will, they will see something good in, in you. This is when eventually you, you might even go start praying for them. And then you might even go now to pray with them. And then you might even go to do Bible study with them. And ultimately, they might come to know the Lord. So this situation does not only apply to the children of Israel, but it also applies to us, wherever we are, that we should remember that the Lord... Um, <clears throat> The Lord always he leads, he leads us into the path of righteousness. So in your situation, which is dire, there will be something right about it, which you should always stick to because you, keep, you maintain, you keep God's principles and you uphold the, um, the Lord's name, God's character, which is holy, which is right. In so, in so much doing, then you will be able to have that kind of relationship which King David had with his, with his God. It's never too late. It, it's never too big or too small. It is just wherever we are, wherever we go, to be conscious that we are representing the Lord. And we are representing God's character. And as I have alluded, God's character is God's name. So this is, wherever you are, it could be your neighbor, it, it could be at school, it could be at work, it could be, um, you're just moving around. People, when they look at you, sh they should be able to see that there is a difference the way this person is carrying out himself. Some of the people, when you meet them, you can tell that, wow, I'm likely to get an argument from this kind of a person from the way that person is portraying themselves. They, um, it's likely to, I would like to have a character, but to have that meekness, that humility, you know, that humility that you portray so that people, when they ask you, and then they can see that contentment, you know, they can see that peace of mind, you know, that peace of mind which affects solo uh, understanding. When they see that, they'll come to know more, and then you'll be able to do, uh, uh, to, to, to tell, expound on God's character. At times, it doesn't need uh, a presentation or a sermon. At times, it just needs the way you carry yourself, you know, and at times it needs um, to do things in such a manner that they'll see that there's a lot of good in what you're doing. If we, we refer to um, Joseph, he's one very good character. You know, Joseph was one innocent young man, very truthful, very honest, you know, 
he did not deserve uh, uh, that treatment, you know, that even the, you know, the, 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 the brothers, they were jealous of him because he was just an honest uh, boy. And uh, they literally sold him. He did nothing wrong about it, sold him. And eventually he was sold to Egypt. And uh, when he was in Egypt, instead uh, as a slave, he gets there. He was accused of, uh, you know, uh, uh, presenting himself inappropriate to Potiphar's wife, which was not true. And he knew it was not true. But he is somebody uh, who continually uh, feared God. You know, he continue, continued feared God. You know, if we read in um, Genesis 39, uh, I'm, I might read from verse 12. Uh, verse 39. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I was, I was looking at the wrong chapter. Genesis 39, sorry. Uh, verse 12 to 18, right? Uh, I'll read in your ear. It says, this is talking, referring to Potiphar's wife. And, said, and she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in, his, in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of their house and spake unto them, saying, See ye, he had brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. See, all this was a lie. So in 15, it came to pass when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried, and he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she and she laid up his garment by her until the Lord came on. All this was a lie. As you see, we earlier on before we reach that stage, see how Joseph dealt with the situation. In verse 9, it says, he was saying, uh, rather I'll start in verse 8, he says, but he refused, he was refusing Potiphar's wife's advances. He said, but he refused and said unto, uh, unto his, his master's wife, behold, in the house, and he had committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than, than I. Neither had he uh, kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness? and sin against God. See, what I had said before, Joseph was saying, not just to sin, but how could he sin against God? Now look, the, the sequence of the calamity, of, of all the calamities is being sold um, uh, to, to Egypt, and uh, he he found favor and apparently he had a good relationship with Potiphar. And then this, this false accusation is thrown in prison, right? He's thrown in prison for something which he did not, he did not do. And even during in, in prison, there's quite a few people who had dreams and the Lord gave him the interpretation for the dreams so that um, one of the, one of the, when so that one of them, when he got out of the, he was able to refer uh, refer to um, to Pharaoh about dreams, remembering that uh, um, Joseph interpreted the dream very well, you know, and the, uh, there was a revelation from the Lord. It was not just the Joseph interpretation, but Joseph God, uh, the God of Joseph revealed the the dream, what the meaning of the dream, and. He was able, on that basis, when Pharaoh had this dream, he was, on that basis, was able to come out. But on all these things which were uh, taking place, all these um, challenges which were thrown at him, he was consistent in his character. 
he was consistent in his character in such a manner that people began to know about Joseph's God. People began to know about Joseph's God. And in, in such a way that Pharaoh promoted him. And eventually, uh, Joseph was able to bring his family, uh, family and they were settled in Goshen. And, you know, uh, this is how they went into captivity. You know, they, they multiplied, the small family multiplied, there were 12 sons, multiplied, eventually it became a nation. And this is what the Lord wanted. He wanted a nation that would represent him, would represent God's character in such a manner that, uh, in such a manner that uh, the people around who do not know him who come to know the Lord. You know, this is what is meant that if we, in our mind, in our thoughts, it can phantom, can understand that in all situations that we go, the Lord do it so that we reflect his own character. And quite a number of times, the only way you can reflect God's character in a manner that people understand is in, if you are in a, a situation of disadvantage and then they realize that what you do and how the Lord intervenes, then they understand God's character more. Um, I can uh, 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 quote quite a number of uh, situations. Even Daniel, in, he, was, he was in captivity in Babylon. And, you know, he was promoted. And in a way, because I'm paraphrasing because, because of, uh, of time, he, even King Nebuchadnezzar was, uh, he was converted. He began to acknowledge there is, there is a God in heaven. Okay, the God of Daniel, but he acknowledged that there's God in heaven who should be worshipped. In Even as you go on, Daniel was very consistent in his relationship with the Lord, and in so in, 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 thereby promoting God's name, and thereby uh, uh, people come to know the Lord, and people come to know, uh, some would come to worship the Lord. So this is what we need to do. That ultimately, as I alluded earlier on, it is our character which will go to heaven. And it is um, God's character that will carry. And God's character has his name. And this is the, 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 the name, the new name, which will be written in our forward, forwards as we go to heaven, as we eventually go into the new city, the new Jerusalem, as we go now even to, to dwell uh, with God in the eternity. And that, that relationship with God, which God had with Adam and Eve, where there was no sin, will be restored back again. And it is the name of, uh, of God, the name of Jesus, that we should uh, remember that it's holy and that it's pure, that it's righteous. And that once we uh, uh, embrace that and comprehend that, then each time when we fall into temptation, once we remember that, it will enable us to draw us back and completely surrender to God to give us strength against temptation. And also to, to remember that we are God's ambassadors wherever we are, whether in good and whether in bad, that if we should consistently uphold God's principles and that in that way, we build a relationship with Christ in that way, we will even endure until the end. In that way, we'll be ready when Jesus comes. And in that way, even our names will be written in the book of life. And which is these words um, that I would say the message of the day has been uh, 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 carved from. And that I pray that when the Holy Spirit even add on Lots of things from this message 
which perhaps they have not been mentioned, so that um, it's in spirit as we connect with him that the name of our Lord Jesus will make a, 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 have a meaning, a positive meaning in our lives, and that will be said. For this is the message this afternoon. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Brother Tibuda. Um, amen and amen. Um, do we have any thoughts, comments, or questions for Brother Tibuda now, please? In the chat, Sister Sarah has said, "Amen." I mean, sometimes these um, the talk, sometimes the, the messages they speak for themselves. Amen and amen. Okay. Um, uh, who would like to close this section with a word of prayer, please, and also pray for Brother Tabuda and his ministry. Oh, pray. Thank you. Let us pray. Kind and loving Father, the creator of heavens and earth and the seas and the fountains of waters, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us that we can come and listen to your word. Lord, we pray for the Holy Spirit to help us to have the character of Jesus so that we can represent you in this sinful world. Lord, make us your pillars and help us to stand for you, dear Lord, just as the patriarchs did in the past. Lord, we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit for sometimes we we fall into temptations and we forget who is standing for us, dear Lord. Help, help us to run to you in each and every situation of life. May we take your word as our, our pillar, dear Lord, and may we trust in you with all our hearts and never to lean in our own understanding. May your name be glorified. And we pray for Elder Tabuda, whom you have used this afternoon, dear Lord. May you bless your manservant. May you bless his family. And may you put a hedge of protection around him. May you bless his ministry, dear Lord. And bless each and every person who's here and the family is represented. And bless those who are going to listen to the recordings, dear Lord. We pray all these in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Sarah. Amen. Okay, and we'll now move on to um, our ne next segment of our meeting, um, where we'll have... Um, for short prayers. Um, who would like to do the prayer of praise, please? Okay, I'll, I'll do, do that, one. sister. Well, oh. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Is that Brother Stephen? Yeah, I wasn't sure whether someone else said something. Uh, praise the Lord. I thank so. you. Um, yeah. And the verse okay. I have for you is Psalm 105, verses 1 to 5, or whichever one you prefer, please. Thank you. 
Um, and who would like to do the prayer for confession of sin, please? I will. Thank you, Sister Mugabe. Good to hear you. Um, the verse I have for you is Revelation 3, verses 17 to 19, or whichever one you'd prefer, please. Thank you. Um, who'd like to do the prayer for the Holy Spirit, please? I'll pray. Thank you. Um, is that Brother Tabuda? The voice sounded slightly different. I'm not sure. Is that Brother Tabuda that just said, I'll pray? Yes, it's me. Uh, oh, sorry. I didn't hear you properly. Thank you. I've got um, verse Isaiah 11 and verse 2, or whichever one you'd prefer, please. Okay. Thank you. And who'd like to do the prayer for prayer retreat, please? Okay, I'll do that one. Okay, so um, for the order of prayer, We'll begin with Brother Stephen with um, praise um, for confession of sin. It is um, Sister Mugabe. Um, number three, the Holy Spirit is Brother Buddha. And number four will be me praying for prayer, prayer retreat ministry. Um, so we'll pray in that order. Before we begin, let us have um, a moment of silent prayer, asking God to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Amen. Brother Stephen. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me okay, sister? Oh, nice and clear. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, Psalm 105, 1 to 5. I oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvellous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Dear Heavenly Father, um, please help us, help us all to have praise, to praise you more often, Lord, and not to take our lives for granted, the life that you give us every day, the breath of life. Yeah, Lord, help us to really, really deeply show so much appreciation and thanksgiving just for every every breath and every every movement that we make uh, help us be more aware lord because it's so easily so easy to just take take ourselves take our lives for granted and just 
not appreciate you as near enough as we should, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that yeah, we, we really have a deeper relationship with you, Lord, and to understand your love and mercy so much more, Lord. In Jesus Christ's loving name, amen. 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 I'm going to read Isaiah 59, verse 2, it's saying here, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Let's pray. Our precious eternal Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit in Matthew 18, 20, you said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. May your kingdom come as it is in heaven in all of us, our families. Oh Lord, may you forgive all our sins because all of us, we have sinned and bear short of the glory of God. Thank you for the word as you used Elder Tabuda, may you use all of us as we'll be in your field, continue to use us. Lord, but the verse says only your sin separated. I want to cry, oh Lord, for all our sins and even all the children are seeing it, oh Lord, the whole world, seeing all the sins we do. May you forgive us our sins so that we present you on this earth as it is in heaven, as your ambassadors, O oh Lord. First Corinthians 10, 31, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, help us to do it for the glory of God, not the glory of this enemy side. Thank you, O oh Lord. May you pour your Holy Spirit to convert, transform, and restore us so that we come back to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 And, and the prayer for the Holy Spirit as we continue with your prayer is taken from Isaiah 11, verse 2. Isaiah 11, verse 2, which reads, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Whatever is, amen. Lord, we know that without you, we are nothing. We know that if we are not connected with you, we are lost. And we know that on our own, Lord, we are not capable of doing these things. For you did promise that you will send us a comforter, the one who reveal the world truth to us, the one who enable us to give us the vision, give us the focus, the one who give us the wisdom so that we choose wisely. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, as we are being taught in the uh, Isaiah 11 verse 2, that the Spirit of the Lord will, uh, will rest upon us, that we have wisdom, that we have understanding, what we have counsel, that we have their knowledge, but the above all things that the fear of the Lord. For we know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that may we have this spirit that will even give us discernment so that as we live in this world, we'll be able to choose wisely. For we know that we are in this world but of not in this world. But we have to live in this world when we are not of this world. And we know that the presence of the Holy Spirit is he the one who can even guide us to all truth. And then subsequently the truth will set us free. And I pray that we, as we understand that it is he the Holy Spirit that he will reveal the truth so that we will build that relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and will strengthen us, and will enable us even to gain access to that peace, the peace of my, uh, the peace that surpasses all understanding. 
And he is the same who also revealed to us when you are working in the Lord's vineyard that you show us the way forward in the gospel. For the gospel cannot be proclaimed without the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we pray with humility as we submit to you that may you take charge, take control, that may the Holy Spirit, may he lead and guide so that everything will be done according to you, uh, the Lord's will, that in humility we accept the Lord uh, uh, guidance. And in humility, we accept that we are not worthy because of our sinful nature. And there's a prayer of confession has gone through. Lord, may we allow the Lord to come into us for he's knocking at the door. And if you open the door, you come in and sup with us. And I pray, Heavenly Father, may we experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our mission, in our relationship, in our, in our prayer life, in everything that we do. May we experience this the presence of the Holy Spirit in a big and mighty way. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, I come in agreement with the prayers that have already gone up. Thank you, dear Lord, for all that you do. You're such a mighty, wonderful and kind God. Dear Lord, we thank you for um, this prayer retreat platform. We pray, dear Lord, that you can continue to abundantly bless it. Um, bless the leaders, continue to guide and lead them. Um, we thank you for Brother Tabuja and all the other evangelists in this platform. Please continue to allow everything to be Holy Spirit-led and put your words in their mouths um, so that we can hear what you would like us to hear at this present time. Dear Lord, that you will um, uh, bless, um, bless the uh, retreat camp meeting that will be happening in December. We pray that everything is Holy Spirit led by you and that everyone that attends will have a blessing. As it says in Psalm, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We thank you, dear Lord, for, le for, for leading the prayer retreat, what they should do, and for leading the evangelists with the messages that they should share. Here's in verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Lord, um, for um, also giving us a peace that the past all understanding. I forgot the line before that says, I shall not want. Dear Lord, we thank um, in verse one where you say that we shall not want. We thank you for providing for, pre for the prayer retreat ministries. Continue from strength to strength. And we pray that you will continue to provide for them and that the brothers the nations will continue to give and also that more people will give and give abundantly in verse 3 of psalm 23 it says he restoreth my soul restoring our soul fair lord and it says he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake we thank you for leading us in the paths of righteousness for your name help us dear lord to continue to do this through the blessings of the Holy Spirit. So we need to bless the leaders of this platform, the evangelists and everyone that is a part of it. Um, and even those that listen to the messages afterwards. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're doing and all that you're about to do. And we pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, I'll stop the recording at this point. Um.